a roll of this filament is worth around two hundred dollars and you're going to see why I'm looking into smart filament storage right now. Hi guys, over the last couple of weeks I've been super busy modifying my printers to make them completely silent. And yes, they are this quiet, so if you're interested, this is the video you want to watch next. So I thought I would follow this up with yet another 3D printing video, this time about storing your filament in a smart way with Octoprints and Spool Manager integration. Storing your filament in a food containers, it's not new or novel, and a lot of you already are doing this. I've got all of those leftovers from work and it's just a shame just to dispose them, so I keep on piling them on, hoping that I'm gonna go through all of it at some point, but the fact is that I just don't have enough projects that require that much filament, and I really need to store it in a way that is smart. And since I'm good with home automation, I thought I'm going to add some brains to otherwise dumb box. So how do we add brains to boxes like this? Well, the answer is simple. We're going to use SwitchBot. And I know what you're thinking, SwitchBot? Wait a minute, isn't that like home automation? All those robots that pull the curtains and tiny robots that switch and uh, random toggles and buttons? Yes, that's correct, that's the one. But they also have SwitchBot Meter and SwitchBot Meter Plus, which I discussed or reviewed previously. And they are really good for this purpose for a couple of reasons. First, we have a nice big display, so if you want to monitor your spools in a more traditional ways, you can just, you know, look at them. Also, if you have a SwitchBot Plus version, it comes with additional icons that indicate wet, dry or comfortable, comfortable comfortable, comfortable conditions, uh, which it's a great add-on. Another good thing is that despite this being part of SwitchBot ecosystem, to use it in a boxes you don't really need a SwitchBot hub. It uses Bluetooth and links directly with your phone, which means every time you are nearby this device with your phone, it will send all that data that is stored, and it can store up to three months of data on that little device, and upload it to your cloud via uh, phone. But if you do get a SwitchBot hub, then you're also gonna get instant upload from the data and Android notifications with alarms about the decrease or increase, in this case, in humidity. So if you don't fancy DIY anything and adding Octoprint and extra Node-RED instance, then all you have to do is just take the box, put one of those SwitchBot meters inside, put the silica gel bags in and lock it for 24 hours. Why 24 hours? because we need the humidity inside to settle. Once that happens, then you can open the app again, providing you already paired to SwitchBot Meter, and set the alarm conditions. That way you're gonna get a notification when the humidity is outside of the preferred range, and you're not going to end up with a moist or damp filament. Oh, and two more things. They last absolutely ages, I think in excess of a year easily, on the set of batteries. They use two AAA batteries, and uh, you can change the unit display with a, a tap on the bottom at the back to have it in Celsius or Fahrenheit. So if you like what you hear, check out the SwitchBot and these as well, they're gonna be linked in the description. There are additional discount bundles if you're going to buy more than one, so it's worth considering. So that was a simple way, but if you're interested in a more advanced way, meaning you want that dashboard and integration with Octoprint and Spool Manager, well, we're gonna use SwitchBot as well because it comes with SwitchBot API, which we can use to download all that data to Node-RED. And don't worry, if you already have other Zigbee um, temperature sensors that you would like to use in this project, I'm gonna include a section for that as well so you would know how to integrate them. I will assume that you've used Octoprint before, so I'm going to skip right to uh, what's important. Uh, go to settings and then plugin manager. You're gonna need the MQTT, which should be probably installed already. And you're gonna need spool manager, 
which is this one. Spool Manager is very handy because it allows you to track the spools that you have. So if you go to Spools, you'll be able to add a new spools. Uh, if it's a new spool, then obviously it's quite easy to do because all the value is going to be written on a label. But if you have a used spool, then you can calculate how much um, of the spool you've used by weighing it. That will give you an estimate in the weight and estimate in the length, providing default values. You'll be able to choose vendors, names, materials, and assign the temperature. So this is quite useful. Another really, really good uh, option uh, on this uh, Spool Manager plugin is that you can select what filament you would like to use on your next print, which enables filament tracking. And, and at any given point, this will tell you um, how much filament has been used uh, from that particular spool and update that information so you know whether your next print have enough filament. So I thought I'm gonna take advantage of that and actually deploy it in my dashboard. So let's jump into my dashboard. You'll see I have a table in here and that table corresponds the same, would correspond the same entries as the um, table in here. So those are the same filaments. And uh, you'll see a little bit less information in this section. You can customize what information you want to see in there. But uh, I've picked the most popular things that you would like to see. Now, and apart from that, you'll, you can select filaments from here and add it to my dashboard. Now, in the dashboard, you'll see that there are certain things that uh, you can read. First of all, we have a filament name. So this is a name you can assign to it and the filament color, which in this case, I'm using Systema boxes and they come with colorful locks and that'll help me to kind of identify them straight away. Another thing that you have is the temperature. The temperature is available either in Celsius or Fahrenheit, um, humidity, and uh, and this again age so you'll know how often you have to rebake it and you can start the timer or reset the timer by double clicking on the icon now then you have the uh, brand of the filament the type of the filament the suggested temperature for printing how much you've got on a spool left how old is this filament and you've got options to add and remove spools if i want to remove the spool i have to do that and for example load another spool so this is a empty box and obviously you can just simply select the filament and add it to your spool and it works just like that. But another cool feature is the full integration with the spool manager. So if you go to your spool manager and select the spool, let's say we have in here the yellow ESOM PLA filaments, which is this one. If I select this, it will also show me that the, this spool from this box has been loaded onto a printer. So on my storage, I'll have empty box, but that empty box is going to be reserved for that um, uh, filament. But if you change your mind, obviously you can just remove it. In the node right section, you're going to need a couple of extra nodes, which is a UI SVG. Obviously the dashboard, which you'll have to uh, install, SQL Lite and UI table. The list of that is going to be also available in uh, my uh, article, so don't worry about it. But that's pretty much everything from the setup. Just take a look at that, how neatly organized it is. It's actually quite easy to operate as well. So first, let's start with the settings. Uh, if you click on On Start, you'll be asked to provide some details. I've described them quite well, but I'm going to go over really quickly. If you're using switchboard meters, you'll need API. So this is where you provide the API. Now next, you can decide how you want your filament left uh, to be displayed. You can either save, uh, have it in meters, grams, percent, or feet. Uh, next up, if you are a Celsius person or prefer Fahrenheit, so you can use COF for that. And then you have to define the boxes. First, you have to provide the number of boxes. I have four boxes. If you want five, then obviously you're going to enter five. And you have to give the color, which you can be either a name or a hex value. And for each, you'll have to also provide a corresponding name. That's going to be very visible in your dashboard. And that's about it for this, this dashboard. The second thing that you have to do is just have to go in here to that white area and open the box ID. Now, if you have four boxes, then obviously you don't have to do anything. If you have three, then delete one of them. Uh, but what you have to do is if you want to have more boxes, you have to add another box in here and, and uh, another iteration. So you've got zero, one, two, three, and four. You'll see that those numbers, the box ID corresponds with the box ID in here and it corresponds with the uh, element index as well from the R. It's zero indexed, all right? 
So next up after that, you'll have to get a copy of this. So you'll have to just uh, copy this, paste it, and link it like it would be so. So you'll have uh, extra value in here. Let's say I'll quickly add, I'm not going to be saving this. Link it like so, and then go in here and iterate values for the event. So in here, I copied the number three. So this is my fifth one. So it would have to have value four for that. And this is the box ID, that's, that's the value I'm using. All right, that's was simple enough. So now that you have that, you probably want to check your layout. So if you go to your dashboard settings and scroll the way to film and store, you'll be able to uh, figure out where the box is gonna go. That's how easy it is. All right, cool. I'm just gonna remove that because I'm not going to need this. The next thing that you have to do, you have to pair your filament boxes with your switchboard meters. And that's very easy. You just open this and you put your device ID, which you can request the device ID with this. That will put your device ID in your context. Uh, let's I mean, go to context data and you'll find your devices. And I've selected that will only show your meters paired. So if you have a device ID, that'll only show up in here. So you have to uh, pair your device ID with the index from the box. So this is the index from here. All right, once you get that, just pair them up. If you're not using switchboard meter, you are missing out, but this is also compatible with its regular Zigbee temperature sensors. And for these, you'll have to make sure that you have your um, topic right, and uh, you'll have to enter your box ID for each one. So you have to pair them this way. So you have the individual sensor and add box ID and this thing gonna do the rest. And lastly, the MQTT events. You'll notice that you'll have to add or edit your MQTT events depending on how you laid out your structure. And you can get that information from Octoprints. If you go to Octoprints settings and then MQTT plugins, <coughs> base topic in here i've got ender you can have it anything you want you kind of have to look into that and see what kind of uh, topic structure you've got and probably just update that first bit unless you've changed more so a little bit information of how everything works so you will know your way around if your node red installation is on the same raspberry pi as your octoprint then you don't really have to follow uh, this part this applies only if your octoprint is on another raspberry pi and all red so on your octoprint you'll have to install samba and samba come on bin so basically everything that you need to have to establish samba share i already have it so i can skip to another step which is configuring it you have to do that by going to the samba configuration scroll down to the very bottom of the file to get to the share settings or to add your share settings. You'll notice that I've added the share settings in here and they are like this and you can copy and paste them from my website and they're gonna be available in the link uh, in the description of this video. So go ahead and do it. Basically we're defining a path to where Spool Manager is keeping the Spool Manager database file. Once you save this, you can set up a username and password for your share. It's not, uh, mandatory but uh, you can do it and it's better for safety and that's it you're pretty much done so all i have to do now is just restart the samba service now we are done on this right that's going to be working automatically you don't have to do anything now we have to jump onto the machine that has your node red installation and there's a couple of things that we have to do first we have to install everything to actually get the samba client working again it's all in the description once we have this installed uh, you can make a new directory, which we're gonna be using to make the uh, share mount. As you can see, I already have it, so I don't have to do anything. So this is where actually I'm going to keep the same file or have access to the same file from Octoprint. So that's the plan. Now we have to mount it. And depending on what you've done, there's a couple of options you have to do. If you use the username and password, which I have, uh, then your mounting co uh, line is like this. So basically you have to put your Octopi address or host name, and then you have to put your user and password that you've picked in this section here. Easy enough. Obviously I've did it already, so I don't have to go through it. Mm. The next step is to make sure that we actually can put this every time. So you can, if you just want to test it, you can do just mount A, to mount everything 
but if you want this to happen on every restart, you have to visit FS tab and add this in here. And if you use the username and password, your username goes here, your password goes here, and that's the line kind of, just remember to change the Octopi IP. And basically that's your mounting point, uh, just restart, exit. This uh, node in here, and this is important node, this makes a copy of the database that we're going to read. We never write to it, so that's fine. And that's gonna be, uh, if your um, database is in a default, position, then it's fine. If not, you'll have to make any adjustments and that's going to copy it to a home pie and then uh, Spool Manager 1 database. If your file is empty and it shows that your SQL cannot connect to it, check your permissions because you have to mount this with proper username and password and that's probably what was the issue. So that's going to make a coffee, copy of the file and we're going to be reading from that file and sending that to our table and display some of that information. If you want to change what goes in a table, just play about with this and it'll give you all the information. You can get that information from spools. So each spool, this is from the database file. You can display all of that information if you fancy playing around. Now, once we have that information, entire UI is handled by this beautiful flow in here. And basically, every time anything happens, um, it checks for template either for empty, full or loaded and set it for every single node and then handles on-click events from the SVG nodes. It's very clean, nice and easy. You won't have to edit anything unless you don't like the SVG, how it looks like, then you can edit the code in here. And I already covered these. These are temperature for the temperature. So there will be updating boxes regardless. Uh, I've set them to be updating every 10 minutes and that's good enough. And this is a desiccant counter. So every hour it will update and iterate the age of desiccant. So you will have an idea how old it is and whether you should reconsider the uh, refreshing it. I mentioned already about MQTT events because we have access to uh, filament loaded, unloaded and added. And those things just trigger the scheduled UI update. And uh, lastly, I have a manual update in here and on load. So when you first time load uh, your dashboard, these one are not showing us SVG components, but actual SVG code. That is pretty much everything you need to know. I would consider this project a 0.9 version, mostly because there's a couple of things I want to uh, fix, but I run out of time. First, I want to align the text a little bit better because right now it's all over the place and it's not dynamically aligned, which is a shame. So that's going to change in the future. Second one, I want to integrate Android notification via join, so you don't have to rely on a switchboard notifications for that. Lastly, I want to add the support for multiple printers because you probably have more than one and that would be quite useful. So if you want to keep tabs on this project and want to find out when the next iteration is out, then social media is your best friend. I know that YouTube works in a mysterious ways and not everyone gets notified about everything, but the best way to keep up with my work is to follow me on any given social media where I share the progress on the projects, etc. So guys, check out the description of this video as well, where you're gonna find a detailed write-up about this project and the links to download it if you want to try it yourself. Also, you'll find the links to SwitchBot devices and everything I've talked about early on. As for now, thanks so much for watching and I'm definitely going to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.